In the previous lecture, we were solving this abacus hypermesh beam problem. So we have created the beam. Now we need to apply the constraint and we need to define a load for this. So this is the problem we were solving. You can see this beam is fixed from the left side and on the right side, the load is applied in vertical downward direction. And this is the value of force. So now let's go to hypermesh. Okay. So after we create the property and we have done the meshing, now we need to define the loading and boundary condition. For this, whenever we are working with Abacus profile, we need to go to this utility option. If this option is not highlighting, go to view, you will see utility menu. In some other versions of Hypermesh, you can find this option somewhere in this toolbars or anywhere in this view option. So go to utility and you will see step manager. Click on this. Okay, right now you can see it is empty. In this step manager, we can create a step that or we can say load step and we can also define the loads and boundary condition here. So right now we don't have any load step, but you can see an initial condition. So in Abacus, the first loading or the basic loading we can consider it as a initial condition because in the initial condition this beam is fixed from the left side and in the next step we are going to apply the force. So this is always going to remain here. So click on new name of the step is let's say this is my bending analysis. So give it any relevant name. Let's say this is bending analysis click on create so now you can see a load step has been created we are going to start from the first option title so we can define a title for this it is optional not necessary in the parameters again these are option these are option when we go to advanced analysis for example you can say we can define an amplitude for the load extrapolation if we want nonlinear geometry, etc. So go to this analysis. Here we need to select what type of analysis we are going to perform. Click on this drop down and here we are going to take this as a static analysis. So here you will see multiple options like frequency, buckle, heat transfer, steady state, etc. Click on static. Now in this static, we need to select the option that is data line in this data line make a check on all options click on so first make a check on this optional and then check on everything so first option is initial increment which means how much percentage of the load or you can say how much scale factor of the load applied initially so we take this value generally 0.1 total time period this is one second so minimum time is time after which the solution will fail. So generally we take this as a 1 e raised to the power minus 5 or when we have complex problem we can take up to minus 8 minus 10 and maximum increment. So when the solution is converging we can define a maximum increment. This value should not be greater than the total time period. We are taking this as a 1. Click on update and click on synchronize. Okay, once again go to data line to make sure values are already in this table. So once we define the analysis procedure, go to boundary. Now in this boundary, you can see concentrated load, distributed load. So first we need to define boundary. It means we need to define the constraint. So right now you can see this table is empty. Click on new. Give it name like this beam is fixed from the left side. So click on fixed, insert the name, click on create. So a name fix has been showing here, click on this. Now you can see in the define, we have three options. Define from constraint panel, map load or view load. So later two options are for showing the load. First option is for defining the constraint. Click on this. Now you can see a constraint menu will open automatically. 
So here we can select type of filter we want. Click on this arrow, you can see node surface, etc. I'm going to select the nodes here. Select the left node and check on everything. And this should be zero. And relative size is basically the size of arrow. Click on create. Let me increase this size. Let's say this is 50. Press enter. You can see this size is increasing. If it is not showing, make sure to check on these options. Let's say this one. Okay, this one. Okay, this one is showing the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so click on return. We are going back to the step manager. So we have defined the constraint. Now we need to define the force. We have two options. Basically, we have more options like concentrated distributed surface. So concentrated is like a force that is a that is on a single point. Distributed force is like a pressure that is distributed. So as the name suggests for this problem, we need to apply the concentrated force. Click on this plus symbol, go to C load. You can see force, momentum, etc. We can expand this window once again. Pick this, pick this arrow, drag it. You can see force. So we are going to define the force here. Click on the C load. Click on new. Okay. Let me drag it once again. Click on this new option. Let's say this is my force. Create. Click on this force. Again, you will see similar options. You will also see some options like delete. When we want to delete any node or any area or parameters. This is for when we have any amplitude curve or when we have multiple loads. So again, go to define, click on first option. So the force panel will open. Here we can once again select the type of filter. I'm going to apply the force on a node. So here we have option of applying the force for selecting the direction. We can select constant vector, constant component, etc. I am selecting here the component option. So the force is in vertical downward. You can see y is upward. So it will be in negative y, other will be 0 and 10,000 Newton is the force. Click on this node and type load will be C load. Click on create. You can see when I zoom out from here, you can see C load value. Click on return. If you want to see the force, you can select map load on the geometry. It is going to show the load. Click on return. View load. It is going to show the load here. You can see this load is highlighting. Click OK. So now we have applied the load. After that, click on synchronize. And now let's go to the next option. We are not going to apply these types of loads like distributed, surface. So once we applied everything, we need to select what type of output we want as a result. So as we know, when we perform any analysis using Abacus, all the results are stored in the file that is called the ODB file. So select ODB file from here. Now click on new. So give it name like this is, let's say this is my output. Create. Now click on this output. So in Abacus, we have two types of output that is field output or history output. So you can see we cannot select any option right now. Make a check here. So field output is the output that is specified on complete phase or complete element or node. History output is when we want to plot the graphs. So now I want the output at node output and element output. Now you can see these options are highlighting. So why we need the node output? Because when we want to find out the displacement, we want the value at a specific node. So here click on this displacement, make a check on this U. Now you can see U is highlighting. So we don't need any other output like velocity, acceleration, etc. Now go to element output. Now 
When we want to find out the values like stress, strain, energy, etc., we find these values at the complete element. So that is why we need to select element output. We have options like elements, element set, position, etc. Okay, so when we want to find the value only at a particular element set, we can select here. Otherwise, if we don't select anything, the value will be calculated at all the elements. And that is something we want right now. So go to stress, make a check on this S. So now we have defined the output, update, synchronize. So from the step manager, everything is defined for now because this is a simple analysis. We don't need to define any other properties. Click on close. Click on close once again. So now let's go to model option. Now in this model, you can see multiple options are highlighting. Let's understand them one by one. First is beam section we have created. Second one is the component which contains the beam profile. Now third one is the load collectors. In the first load collector, you can see fix. This is the fixed load collector that is constraining. Now second one is the force. So force is basically the force we have applied. And one more thing we need to make sure that this fix should be the initial condition. Click on yes. So why it is initial condition because initially this beam is constrained. After that we apply the load. That is why we have we should have an initial condition. After that we have load step that is the bending analysis. Again, you can see all these values we have defined. We can change them from here. Material. Okay, once again, go to this model view. Again, if you want to change anything, you can define it from here like material. And then output block is the output request we have defined from here. And this is the property. Okay, so if you want to once again, double check everything. First, let me save this file, save as, this is my beam 2. You can go to tools and you will, you can go to model checker abacus. Right click, run. Make sure there should be no error here. You can see it is empty, no error. It means our analysis is proper. After that, we need to export this file because this is hypermesh interface. We cannot directly run the analysis from here. Click on export option from here. So Abacus file format is .inp format. In the type of output select Abacus template is standard 3D. In the file specify the location and name. So let's say this is my beam bending. Click on save. So you can see beam bending dot INP is the format. Export option, select all, click on export. So now the file has been exported and we are going to continue this in the next lecture.